What is up guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Joe. You could call me Slow Joe and this is Vader, my 09 Corvette Z06. And this is episode one of Race to Sebring. To get this old Vader Z06 out on the track, there's one key component that I want to put on it to make sure that I have a full-time driving coach. And that's the Garmin Catalyst. So we're going to jump into installing that bad boy on this vehicle today. We'll go into details exactly what the Garmin Catalyst is, how it works, and how it can benefit you as a driver if you do intend to purchase one. But before we get into any of that, Vader to Z06 had different plans for me this morning. Let's check it out. Oh, well that's awkward. We ain't gonna go very fast like that. And then on top of that, unfortunately, since I bought the car, the battery that's been in this car has been a complete nuisance. The battery died just about a week of owning the car. I bought a tender for it. Now, I would typically keep the car on a tender. Totally fine. Um, it would uh, start up as long as it was on tender. Um, then the car went in the shop for about two months. You can see that video kind of pinned here where we were doing some valve seal repairs on this car. The battery was so dead at the time that they went to start this thing up that it took them three different tenders and uh, jump boxes to get this car to start back up. Fast forward to yesterday, took the wife out for a nice ride in the car, got the flat tire, and on top of that, battery refused to start. I do always carry a small little jump box with me. Highly recommend this for any vehicle. Got one of these guys. I always carry it in this car, specifically, just because it's a little bit older, it sits around a lot longer. So, you know, higher likelihood of a dead battery. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this battery out go swap it out. I'm going to put a standard battery in it for now, probably an Optima battery, but if not, just a standard battery and just keep it on the tender while it's home. And you know, this car is only really for track use and the occasional cars and coffees, but we'll get those two things fixed and then we'll jump into the catalyst. Let's get started. So what is the old Garmin catalyst that I mentioned earlier on in the video? This is pretty much think of this as a one-time payment or if you finance it, but a one-time payment for a driving coach full-time in your vehicle without having someone adding more weight in your car. So what this is, Garmin's pretty much their catalyst platform is a GPS-enabled, data-driven uh, technology that's basically going to gather as much information as possible based on all the driving you are doing on track, and it's gonna start to develop optimal uh, braking points, acceleration points, apexing, in and out of turns, low turf information, it's going to start to generate this data. It's going to collect all of it and it's going to start to educate you based on what those best options are. Now it is data driven. So right out the box, it's not going to do much other than collect data. As you start to create more and more and more laps and the more time you put on the track with this thing, the better and better it's going to get at telling you where these different points are. It's gonna grab all the different points. Let's say you're going into the same turn every single time. This turn here that's exampled here on the image. And every single time you're coming in a little hot, you're braking too early, or you're accelerating out of the corner too quickly. It's gonna to start developing those optimal situations. It's gonna put it together versus all the other points that you've done on that same turn. And it's gonna give you the best and most optimal way that you can enter and exit that turn and other places on the track. It's also gonna collect a lot of other information just based on how you're pacing against other drivers that also have the Garmin Catalyst to kind of give you that. It's gonna obviously give you your lap times. It's gonna give you what it assumes your optimal lap time would be, um, your speed, your position. It's also gonna record a lot of this data in a visual aspect. So over to the left-hand side here on this image, you can actually see the little dash cam that's going to you know, record your laps and it's how it determines where it is on the track as well, comparing it to the GPS information available to it. And it's going to record all of your laps. So you can go back and look at what you did if you're not gonna use it in the comparison positions. You can look back at what you did and how you can improve. So this is, I think, instrumental to anyone starting out or anyone that's actively racing just to have this and kind of have a, a system that's going to give you either you're progressing in a positive or negative nature, but it's going to give you some sort of direction. So let's get this thing opened up. Let's see what's all inside. Let's see how we set it up in the old Vader. And once we get it open and powered, we'll go in through some of the menus and kind of go through more of the settings of the actual Garmin. So the first thing you're going to notice is massive screen. Beautiful. Now I've seen a lot of drivers kind of mount this on their windshield. I'm not a fan of that because this thing's going to be on 
it's going to be speaking and it's also going to be showing some of my you know settings on screen while i'm on track i feel like the windshield is going to be a little distracting um, and i might focus more on this than my actual driving so i'm going to try to mount this in a lower location where it's still visible to me but it's not a point of emphasis for me i'm still going to drive and uh, do my best to focus on the road but also listen to what it's saying but not be looking at what the individual parameters are actually showing up on screen. Here's that small dash cam, it's a little pain in the butt to remove from here. We'll remove it in a second. But this does require you to actually mount this on your windshield. Now, one thing I saw in another video that I thought was perfect, uh, was a good little tip is when you're mounting this system, actually go ahead and power the platform on because this system is gonna tell you exactly where the optimal position is for this camera. You want this to break exactly even on the settings. So um, we're gonna power this on when we install it. That way we can uh, have the camera positioned exactly where it needs to be. I do believe it has like some sort of adhes adhesive here, which is pretty much what it glues onto the windshield. Um, so we'll get this on. I haven't heard anyone really complain about these things falling off. So um, you should be fine. Just make sure that you clean the area, the surface area that you're gonna place it at. Got stickers, of course. I probably, stickers are probably the most important part to any purchase for your car. I mean, this is, this is where it's at. Obviously the instruction manual, and then you have your mounting hardware here. Plenty of wiring. We'll go through all this stuff in a minute because I have no clue where half of this stuff goes. Um, and then you have, obviously this is the mainframe for the back of the actual unit magnetizes on there very very strong as you saw from me just getting close to it i wasn't trying to put it together yet um and then you have the suction if you want to go ahead and do windshield mount i may i may i don't want to put it on my windshield so we'll look at where else we can actually place this before doing so um so yeah pretty straightforward quite a bit of wiring there mainly just so you have enough space to get everything powered up you do got to get the screen powered you do got to get the camera wired um then your instruction manual i mean this is 2023, I don't really read these too often anymore. I'll, YouTube's exists for that reason. Um, and then yeah, beautiful little sticker there. Let's get started. Now one of the things I like to do before ever, something I gotta mount or wire into anything is just kind of find a placement in the car before anything. So I have the, the biggest component. We obviously know the camera's gonna go on the windshield. There's no changing that, but this thing, um, you know, it's big, it's bulky, and it's gonna be out on track as is. Obviously, when you're not riding it, you can downsize to just this piece. Um, but, you know, even then, if I wanted to stay with something where it's just quickly accessible, but not, I don't want it on my dash, just too big, I mean, on my windshield, it's just too large of a screen for this little windshield that I have going on here. I don't wanna put it in certain areas on the passenger side because I would like, ideally, to have passengers ride with me on the occasion from time to time. So I gotta find the right placement for it. Um, maybe somewhere lower part on the dash uh, where it's physically mounted to the dash and then I can just remove the screen when it's not in use. So I'm gonna start playing around with different spots here, determine where I wanna put it. Once I've confirmed that, we'll jump back into this and get this thing installed. So I think what I've chosen is to kind of go and take a page from uh, Phelps Garage a good friend of mine who actually already actively tracks pretty pretty often, some would say. Uh, what he's done is he's kind of created an incognito setup where when he's using the car for any other purpose that's not track related, there is no Garmin Catalyst on his dashboard. Now this dash on the previous owner, you might see it on, on film, but this is a 3LZ or 2LZ. Uh, so basically this had the leather wrap dash. Instead of getting the dash leather mat repaired he decided to peel it so the dash is in really rough condition so i don't want to commit to putting it anywhere on this dash because there's a good chance that we're going to do work to this dash even though this is purpose car is going to be for the track i hate the way it looks it really just adds to the age of this car so we're either going to replace this dash or we are going to get it rewrapped both of them would require removing the dash and I don't want to have to be dealing with the Garmin at that point or like having to relocate it 
or called more damage to the dash than it already has. So I do want to go with this incognito setup, which is basically using this fixed mount here, um, bolting it through my uh, glove box, and kind of creating a setup where it's going to basically, while I'm on track, I will drop my glove box and have this just out here extended, right where you can see my arm, like this. And when I'm not using it, I would just basically unbolt from here, put my garment away, and I'm good to go. So right now what I'm gonna get to is get ready to just kind of mock up the length I would need for the garment to sit comfortably and, um, and get it mocked up. And then the beauty of that is that the wiring for the camera can just kind of run up my dash, up my A pillar right here, and through my windshield, through my uh, headliner, down onto the windshield. So it makes the process a little bit easier too, less wire showing on the whole thing. So let's get this thing drilled in and see uh, if we can get it powered on. What I quickly noticed was just adding one of these joints, basically what I have here in my hand here. Um, with just one of those, the Garmin would be too close uh, inside to the dashboard panel, but it does bring two of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mount this other one down there and we should have enough distance there for the garment to sit comfortably just outside the uh, glove box. So I'm gonna put that on there, mount it up, start the wiring process to get the screen powered and then we'll, we'll focus on everything else. There it is, nice and mounted up, just under in my glove box. And I have some flexibility to it. Right now, the way I have it mounted, I can adjust those arms and either extend it further out or move them. And whenever I'm no longer using this, uh, the Garmin, I just loosen that arm, pull my Garmin right off, close my glove box. Two ways to power your Garmin. You have the old handy dandy cigarette lighter way, or you have their own little power with a fuse that you gotta run to a power source. Um, my cigarette lighter is right over here to the far left, right here to the left in the center of the dash. If you have a Corvette, you're aware of that. And since my app, my device is gonna be right here, I am just going to shorten this wire a little bit and kind of just plug it in when I need it. And the rest of the time it won't be plugged in. I'm not going to hardwire this into my vehicle. I rather trust a cigarette lighter to choose when it should be on and when it should be off. Um, let's go through the menus. Let's get this ball rolling. I still have not wired the uh, windshield cam because you want to go ahead and use the software to tell you to dictate if it's level and where best to place it. Um, so we're going to do that through the steps and then we'll wire the camera. First thing, what I love about it is it's so responsive. Like, a lot of these softwares and these platforms, you have, you know, these, these operating systems are usually so laggy. But this one is just really, really good. So we're connected to the Wi-Fi. I'm not gonna pair any headphones. So this is a nice little intro video. With the old red helmet. Now, if you don't have a Garmin account, you're gonna have to create one. Probably best to create it on a computer. Don't follow my steps here. I completely did not do this, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this now.
It's weird that it doesn't have an auto populate for this. So let's get started with the whole mounting the camera up. And let's see how that part goes. So we've pretty much got this lined up, right? We've got it running through here and through the side pillar as well. Now, what I wanna do is just kind of power on the camera, see if it's gonna give me any settings. I don't recall what kind of happens from here. I'm really hoping it doesn't ask me to pull the car out and see daylight because like I said in the earlier part of the video, I do have a flat tire and a slightly dead battery. So ideally, I won't have to move the car, but if that's the case, I'll have to wait to finish this up. But I'm really optimistic that I could just do this while the car's in the garage. What it's basically telling me there is just make sure that the camera is centered with the, v the center of the hood, which I did that. That's pretty much dead center with the rear view mirror and that's mounted then it's just making sure that you know your hood is kind of drawn in alignment here i might recalibrate this once i can get the car out of the sh out of the garage and then this center box here is kind of like the in between which it doesn't want the camera to be mounted within so everything looks really good there we're just going to move on and we now have an interface to work with here um, as you can see here, it, the closest track to me is Homestead, so it's already using some of the GPS data, data to kind of tell me where it's at. It's got a 90 degree temp at the track, you know, 20 cents chance of rain, 56% humidity. So it's already giving me, you know, insight here and stuff like that. We'll go through these settings in a moment um, to kind of figure out what's going on here. So here we have it, nice and mounted up here to the very front. We have the wires pacing through here all the way up onto my little screen my little camera and wires back in my headliner where they're not visible to anyone and of course the old trusty device is connected and ready to use when it's all said and done your track day is done you want to go ahead and review you can actually use this as a tablet you know it'll hold charge you know it's being charged when it's on the platform you take this anywhere with you. Take it to pit lane, take it, you know, home, take it with you while you're sitting on the john, review your old data, you know, go through the driving settings, et cetera, et cetera. And then of course, when I get home, I go ahead and loosen those little joints enough where I can rotate this back into the, into the, da into the uh, center console or glove box, whatever you want to call it. Go ahead and close my glove box and like nothing, nothing installed well finished the garmin install went inside to eat dinner with the family and then quickly realized that i shot absolutely zero closing to this video um garmin installed like you saw first 20 something minutes of this video if you've watched this far yo thank you guys for that like and subscribe i'm gonna be putting out like i said once a week is my goal 
really trying to push myself on this. This is episode one of my race to Sebring, and then hopefully September 30th will be the first time that I get Vader out on the racetrack. But for right now, we got to get a couple things dialed in. Like I said, thanks for watching this far, guys. Like and subscribe, drop a comment below on your thoughts on the videos or the Garmin or any questions about the ZL6. Peace.